Just a little lick, just a little taste. <laughs> Just a little juice. Outside the walls of Orvid District. Are we getting out? Historia and Eren? Together? But first we gotta deal with Race Titan. I'm just gonna assume Hanji's fine for my own sake. Armin. Eren! <laughs> That's a cool shot. Is that foreshadowing? That's symbolic. The whole thing is gonna come down eventually. This whole infrastructure. Thank you, Armin! <laughs> you can always count on Armin to figure things out. <laughs> the story has become such a badass. Yeah, really sounds like the enemy of humanity there. That was sweet. <laughs> nice. Bigger than the Colossal Titan. You done goofed. <laughs> He, d he has done goofed, for sure. He broke the rules, and it's destroying his temple. Armin? <laughs> they look disgusted. They look a little bit more sympathetic. Oof, this is like a bad time for Eren to have to do this. Eren! This whole thing is so chaotic. Like, I'm imagining being in the shoes of the cadets and Levi, doing all this, rescuing Eren, and then seeing him just as a total mess. I feel like it's gotta be so confusing and also defeating. A lot of this is just faith, you know, like have faith in Erwin, have faith in Eren. It just seems like everything is constantly falling apart. Like there's nothing to believe in. I love how they flash back to the forest scene from way back in season one, when Eren made the decision to trust in his comrades, which in his eyes probably is what caused the death of Petra and Ula and the other guy. And now he goes the opposite direction where he's like, well, since this is the end, let me trust in myself. But it seems like he believes in himself less than ever. Like, he's just lost his entire worldview and identity. So what will he even draw on to fight? This is the, the the weakest state he's been in, I think, psychologically. And to be his friends in this situation, picking up on that, but having to put the, the burden on his shoulders again, the whole thing is just, it doesn't feel good. <laughs> it's weird. It's very dark. Like he says, let me believe in myself, but what does that even mean at this point? What does he believe in? His fighting abilities? It just feels like he's in a vacuum of belief. Alright, she's conscious, that's good. <laughs> what the hell? It's freaky looking. Hey, look who it is. We're all here. Yeah, it's gigantic. Twice as big. <laughs> Very Erwin answer. What else are you gonna do? Eren. 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 <laughs> Eren. Oh, we got a John John Eren. Oh, nice. So he actually he made wall-like things. So he didn't fight yet. He saved them. I'm amazed he pulled that out of, out of himself in that state. You know, for all Levi's coolness and collectedness and acting indifferent, once again, I feel like that was a really kind thing that he just did. My feeling about them right now is 
is a feeling of being lost, especially Eren. But right there in a very subtle way, I think Levi just connected Eren to something good, right? Like he just helped him refocus on something positive. Levi keeps scoring these social intelligence points with me. The more I see Levi, the more I read between the lines of his character, the kinder he seems. It's weird, you know, like watching this, things didn't turn out as bad as they could have. Like Historia didn't eat Eren, they escaped. So far at least, they still gotta deal with this big Titan, but they ended this practice, which, you know, in my feeling so far is, is not a positive thing for, for humanity. They made it out without any deaths, it seems, which is a miracle. Yet, to me, it still feels somewhat of a, a loss. It has a feeling of desperation, the whole thing. But hearing Levi say that, even I'm somewhat encouraged. It's like, well, look at the bright side. <laughs> you know, which it's kind of striking in the show. That, I feel like, beyond just being very intelligent, very socially intelligent, feels like good leadership. Like, oh yeah, we got like this common purpose together, right? We're still in it. Yeah, they did all that to get him and then he's he was a sniveling mess, but he came through. But I guess it's a positive thing for, for the cadets and how they see him. I mean, they see how much he's sacrificing for them. This all feels like love to me. This thing, man, it's... It's just not right. <laughs> Crab, Titan. Susumu! <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's more reasonable. All things considered, this was amazing. They pulled it off. Rod Race, yeah. He had a little lick, a little taste. Why and how do you know? I'm wondering what is Rod Race's plan now? How do you win? Oh my, it just gets worse and worse. Nothing's gonna stop Hanji from trying to figure things out. Yeah, I'm with Hanji on this. ロトレースは人間に戻りますかなりはい。わお。確実にロトレースの洗脳を解けるという確証がないこと。彼を同行速しようと人類の記憶を改ざんされたら終わりです。You don't want to give him that much power. Yeah, it's true that even though what Grisha did is awful in its way, he did break the cycle. He did give them this opportunity. And to me, it feels like it was inevitable that would happen eventually. I mean, the truth just wants to be free. That is not a sustainable strategy long term. It always collapses. And it collapses in tragedy in the most spectacular fashion a lot of the time. And that's true both of individual lies and also widespread societal lies. But I'm curious what Rice is up to because it doesn't seem like he's after Aaron at this point. It seems like he has another agenda and it seems like Erwin's figured it out. Additionally, this might in some small way be Historia also granting Aaron a kind of mercy. It seems like they're reading his state pretty well and they're doing their best to kind of give him some some walls, some structure, something to feel normal again after his whole world just collapsed. Speaking of what do you place your faith in, right? I I'm hoping that Aaron actually can shift his focus to like his friends and comrades as something that is meaningful to him, which it seems like he's doing so far. And I feel like they're also doing a great job earning that, showing concern for him, not seeing him as a pawn, a pawn piece. There was that moment of discomfort where they thought like, actually maybe it would be better if Rod Rice ate him, but you could tell that was probably never gonna happen. And some of that might be strategy, like Historia is saying and Armin is saying, but I feel like a lot of that is is also just, they're not willing to do that, which is reassuring. <laughs> the basement. Are we ever gonna get there? <laughs> I feel like the basement will be the last episode of the show. She was talking as the fans. Yeah, I feel like it's a beacon of hope for them at this point. They just need things to look forward to. He's never really been a father to her. He just shows up when it's convenient. More lies. But it's gotta be so hard for Astoria because that's that's something seductive for her. She's always wanted to be needed. No, that's cool. We're past it. Yeah. 
Right. And she kind of snapped out of it. She was in sort of a trance, but she made the right choice. Feels like Astoria's awake for the first time. She's thinking for herself. Look at how loving he is to the horse. It's a little weird, though. Yeah, Connie's on it. Exactly, yeah. Very sharp. She's being maneuvered into a pawn position this whole time from multiple sides. Yeah, yeah. So that feels good. That's sort of the conflict, right? It's not about what she does, it's about whether or not she's authentic in doing so. That's something I feel is overlooked a lot. Like, it's different when you do something because of external forces or external pressures. And when you do things because you actually have chosen to do that and you're confident that you actually could make multiple choices happen. But Astoria actually seems to have come to a place where she's actually confident that she could do what she wanted to do or that she has a choice. So even though the result might be the same, the feeling is totally different. It feels stronger than what she was before now, where she was just sort of looking for attention, looking for a place to belong. Also, it's sort of queenly. <laughs> that confident walk. <laughs> Another gamble. Faith in Erwin. Have faith. No! <laughs> Damn it! One thing I really like about these three episodes is we really went into it. Like, we really went into the darkness here. Just as a viewer, I felt totally hopeless and lost, even at the start of this episode. But I think that what this episode does really well is it kind of pulls us out of that a little bit. Like, things are still in crisis. There are still a lot of mysteries. But as some of the leadership seems to understand, this was maybe a huge victory emotionally for the scouts. Like, they all pulled through this together. Aaron got the camaraderie he needed. He came through for them and saved them. Historia steps up into her role and does so without weakness. Erwin has a plan, right? Like, the feeling overall is powerful, and that's something that's been building gradually, but has been especially noticeable this season. Speaking of falling into the darkness, the scouts had nothing at one point in this season. They were the enemies of the kingdom, cast into the woods, Erwin was in jail, and they turned the whole thing around, and now the only thing left to deal with immediately is, is Rod Race, who's very slowly approaching. <laughs> I'm very curious what he's after though, and I'm very curious what Erwin knows and how they're going to deal with this. It's interesting that they had that discussion about Historia at the end. They're speaking really openly. In a way, it feels more than just a military regiment. It feels like now they're they're bonded, right? So that Levi can discuss things with, with Connie. They've been through so much together. At this point, they've transcended their initial roles, and now they're like a group of heroes, sort of, you know? Especially considering that the whole system has been turned on its head. Like, what are the scouts even? What is the system now? You know, it's just individuals and groups of people vying for what they think is right. My gut feeling about this episode going into it was that this would be the end of this little this little arc, which I guess it was in a way because we got out of that church thing. But rather than that being something that's complete and then getting a breather, I feel like the action's actually ramping up. So this latter half of the first part of season three just gets better and better. We got all this information. We got actual stakes finally, you know, like even though we don't have the full picture, to me, it sort of feels like, okay, we actually have a, a tangible evil threat. We have this world built on lies for, for selfish reasons. And we actually have a chance to restore truth to this society. What's the truth? Which led to some character changes and now leading into what I guess will be an interesting confrontation with the largest titan we've seen so far. So it's all really fun. But that's it for this episode. I'll see you guys next time when Rod Race, Rod Race slowly approaches.